What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to model a classical column in Revit and it's going to be a parametric column so you're going to be able to uh, set up the, a variable height parameter for that. But before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. And if you want to download this column uh, Revit family check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see here I am in Revit and we're going to be modeling this column as a family. So let's just go here to new. And once you're here you need to search for a metric column family template. So that's this one. So that's what I'm going to be using for this project. And as soon as it opens up, uh, let's start a new family. So this will be uh, the, the, this column family will be with two nested families, one for the bottom of the column and one for the top of the column. I just think that's the, the most efficient way to model something like this. So let's do that. So for that, let's go here to file new and just start a new family. And this will be a just a generic family. So just go with a generic model. Hit OK and let's start. Okay, so the the diameter of the column, I'm going to go with 50 centimeters. So uh, just go here to the front elevation and let's do this bottom as a revolve. So you just go here to revolve. You uh, just go for axis line and then you create just one vertical axis line like that. The length isn't really that important. Then you go with the boundary line and this is the important part. You should go out 250 millimeters. So go like this. 250 millimeters. Now uh, let's bring this down a bit. Yeah, we can do it at 300 millimeters offset from the ground. Then you go like this, just go down uh, a bit, maybe like this 150, 140 millimeters. And now let's do the bottom part. So maybe extend like this, create some arc like that, then maybe go in a bit, then another arc over here, then go out a bit and just go with a line, kind of like this. Then let's switch to an arc. And yeah, let's do something like this, like that. And now just go CO or maybe pull this in a bit. Okay, now go CO, multiple, check multiple, and then go here, here, and there you go. Now let's delete this. Let's see where this ends up. Okay, this <laughs> turned out perfect, so it's actually on the ground. And let's just bring it back over here and close it off over here. Now just go finish, and there we go. We've got our uh, column bottom, but we're not stopping here. The reason why we did this as a separate family is because we have that edge over here that's kind of carved uh, all, the, all the way up in the column, so we need to model that here as well. So uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, it will make sense in a moment. So just go here to create, go with void forms and let's go with void revolve. Uh, make sure to go to this line and then for the access line, just do one like that. And once you're here, uh, just do a simple line uh, at the angle of 45 degrees and length will be 50. And we actually need, need that to be like this, a an arc. And now go just up here all the way up and close it off like this. Now we're just going to finish that and go now in your reference plane, zoom in, find that tank and then go with MV for move and just move it outside by the value of five millimeters. Now the reason for this is if you don't do that for some reason it doesn't want to uh, get attached to this family, it doesn't want to cut into the column. I don't know why that is but we have to work with Revit with what it gives us, so that's what we have. Then we go here to the array command and just make sure that it's a uh, radial array. And here for the number, uh, let's go with something like 18. Well, exactly 18. Make sure you check last here and uh, the center of uh, rotation, place it here and then just pull it outside and just, just go like this. Do a half circle. Then you click out of it, hit OK. Then you select the whole array and you extend it a bit like this. And then here for this angle, set it to 20. Okay, now if we go into 3D, this is what we have. So we've got the bottom of that column and now we can load that into our family. And once we're here, I'm just going to place it here in the center. Okay, so we've got the bottom of our column. Let's do the top of the column. And for that, we need a new family. So just go here to file, new family, uh, scroll down a bit. Let's search for a generic model go okay. 
Okay, so once we're here, now this family, unlike the other one, it, we're going to mod be modeling it down. So if I go here to front elevation, I'm actually going to be mo pulling it down. So go here for extrusion, uh, or sorry, not an extrusion, a revolve. So create revolve access line and go like this downward, then go with boundary line and then go like this. Again, at 300 millimeters or I don't know, let's go with 400 just in case. Pull it out by the value of 250. So 250, be exact. Okay, then go back up a bit. And we're actually not going to go all the way up. Let's just close this off and give it an offset of like 40 millimeters. And then here, uh, let's create a little arcish uh, thing. So go like that and then maybe like this. And then maybe we can just copy this down a few times. So just CO for copy and make sure that multiple is selected and do something like that and then close it off like this on join element and there we go. So we've got something that looks like this and then you just go finish and there we go. Okay, so once we have this, go to create, now go with extrusion and here uh, let's do something like a rectangle that goes like this and then extend it a bit, kind of like that, then go with a circle go over here and make sure you go all the way up. Actually, let's make that larger. Let's go with 80 millimeters, MV, and then extend it a little bit like this. Okay, so once we have this, unattach this, go SL for split element, then trim and extend this, trim and extend that. Okay, so once we have this part, let's go here and DM, so draw mirror, and let's mirror it around this side, delete this element, and then go trim and extend to close this off. Okay, so just go finish, go into reference level, extend it a bit over here, so let's go with, so it's, yeah, let's go with three, 320 and minus 320. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I really like the way this looks. Okay, now let's go back to front elevation and now we can actually join these two elements together. So yeah, that looks, a bit nicer. Now let's create a void over here just to have that stylish element. And for that, uh, let's go to create a void, void extrusion, but go first to set work plane and make sure to go with pick a plane and pick this plane. Now we go with another rectangle like this and uh, make sure to give it an offset here of 10 and another offset here. Okay, 20, that works and then maybe extend this like that and extend this like that. Okay, finish it off like that. Okay, this looks nice. Now we need to create a full circle. So just go with an offset tool, give it an offset of something like 10 millimeters, offset it like this. Okay, and once we're here, I'm just going to go with the spline tool and then go like this all the way around making that classical shape. So maybe go like this, then go from the other side. Let's make sure we're going with in the direction of this angle, kind of like that, and finish it off over there. And then to cap it off, I like to use just an, a simple arc like this, and there we go. So now you can select this, and of course you can play around and maybe make it look a bit nicer. It, Looks a bit silly maybe in some places. Maybe this, make it larger. Yeah, I guess this looks better. Oh, it's looking better already. Okay, but you get the point. That's how you make these adjustments. And now you select this whole thing, mirror it. So just MM for mirror, mirror to the other side, delete this part, extend this here, extend this there, and there we go. So just hit finish and go to reference level. Uh, make sure that this is at 50. 40, there we go, mirror it to the other side, let's see, okay, and now if we go into 3D, this is what we get, so it's looking cool already, now we need to create those cuts again, so just go back to front elevation, just go to create, let's go with void forms, void uh, revolve, okay, and let's set the work plane to what? front back. Okay, so now here go again with access line, uh, just go like that. 
over here, then go with an arc. So go with an arc like this at 50. Okay, something like that. Extend it downward, extend it upward. Okay, and let's, yeah, let's do this at this interval. Go finish. Okay, now go back into reference level. MV, move, and let's again move it by the value of 5. That's just something you unfortunately have to do. Now go here to an array. Again, radial array number is 18. Last, place center of rotation here and just rotate it like this, half circle. Then you finish, go OK. Then you extend this all the way to this side. Select the thing, make sure you type in 20, and there we go. If we go into 3D, it looks like this. Now let's load this into the project. So load into project, family one. Okay, and here set the work plane to reference upper reference level and just place it like that. Now if we go into 3D, this is what we have. And now it's time to finish the family, just do the middle part. So for that, go into here, floor plans. And yeah, let's hide this element for now. Okay, it's going to be, make it easier to work with. Now go with extrusion, set work plane, pick a plane, go OK, and let's pick this plane. And now go with pick lines. Can we select the whole thing? Great. Okay, so you select the whole thing, except this part, you don't need this. Okay, so just go finish, go into front elevation, attach it over here, lock it in place and just attached over here, I'll lock it in place. And now in case you move any of these elements, okay, so we need to attach this. So AL, align, remove constraints, lock this in place, and then lock this to that. Okay, so now it should move. Okay, and if this doesn't want to move, then uh, a simple solution for that is to create another reference plane. So just go create reference plane, and let's do one over here. So kind of like that, you add a dimension line like this and you just lock it. So you can lock this to your reference plane. So just go with AL to double check. Yeah, and now if this is locked, it should move with it. Okay, there we go, so we've fixed that problem. So you can basically make adjustments to this column. And now to set the material, uh, you need to go into these families. So just go edit family. And what I like to do is I like to go to 3D and select the whole thing. Then go to filter, check none, check the generic models only, hit apply. And then here for the material, go to associate family parameter and add a material. Let's just call it mat material uh, parameter. Load back into project, family one, OK, override. And do the same thing for this one. So edit family, you select the whole thing, filter, check none, just generic models, hit apply, hit OK. And here for the material, again, create a mat, uh, mat parameter. Hit OK, load back into project, family one. OK, and the reason for this is what you want to have is to have an option of adjusting the material uh, in, inside of the column family. And let's just try to join this to see if that works. Okay, it doesn't want to do that. But anyway, so now for this, you need to set it at whatever material you want to have it at. So let's find some stone. Let's see, I, I like this travel thin stone, whatever it's called, hit apply. Okay, do the same thing for this one. So now here, you should have a material. Okay, here it is, material and search for that, hit apply, okay. And the same thing goes for this one. Just go edit type, find material, and set it to the same. Go apply, okay, and now if we go into realistic, we have that column, and of course we can change material if necessary. But there you go, that's how you create a classical column in Revit, and it's actually parametric. So as you saw, uh, if we go to front elevation, we can actually change its uh, uh, size as much as we want. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope it was interesting and I hope I you've learned something new and I hope you will be able to use this in the future. And if you want to download this exact family, check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Thank you.